Hello friends, welcome to this video lecture on thermal stresses in composite bars which we studied in mechanics of materials. Now to understand the concept of thermal stresses in composite bars, let us discuss one example of composite bar. The example is that a sleeve in the form of a circular tube of length L is placed around a board and fitted between washers at each end. The nut is then turned until it is just snug. The sleeve and bolt are made up of different materials and have different cross-sectional areas. Now it is given that, assume that the coefficient of thermal expansion that is alpha s of the sleeve is greater than the coefficient alpha b of the bolt. So this is the given example. Here we have a sleeve and there is a bolt. Now, Hold this assembly is fixed by using washer and nut and here we can say this is a composite bar. Now for this given thing uh, we have to find that if the temperature of the entire assembly is raised by an amount delta T what stresses that is sigma S and sigma B are developed in the sleeve and bolt respectively and what is the increase delta in length L of the sleeve and the board. So here if we see this assembly now as we discuss this is a sleeve and this is a board. If we draw its cross section we can find that there is a solid cylinder inside it and outside there is a hollow cylinder that is a sleeve and here it is fixed at it both ends by the fixed support. Now here if we see it as it is rigidly fixed at it at its both ends we can say that this is a composite bar. Now before studying this temperature stresses or thermal stresses in composite bars let us quickly revise this part of thermal stresses in simple bar as we know that when we have a bar which is free to expand or contract means when it is not restrained or fixed at its both ends in this case the free expansion takes place when it is subjected to the rise in temperature or increase in temperature and this free expansion of bar is given by delta is equal to alpha into delta T into L where alpha is the property of a material which is called as coefficient of thermal expansion and delta T is the change in temperature in this case if there is expansion then it is a increase in temperature and if there is a contraction then there is a decrease in temperature. Now if we fix this bar at its both ends so if in this second diagram if we see here if both ends of these bars are fixed in this case this free expansion will not be take uh, will not takes place and here because of this fixity at its both ends the thermal stresses are developed in these bars and these thermal stresses uh, are equal to alpha into delta t into e where alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion delta t is the change in temperature and e is the modulus of elasticity for the given material. Now let us see the given example here we have this composite bar or here we have this assembly. Now if we see here both ends of these bars are fixed so we can consider it as a statically indeterminate problem. Now while solving statically indeterminate problems we know that here we need equations of equilibrium at the same time we need equations of deformations or displacements. Now here in this case as both ends of these bars are fixed it is not possible to get the equations of deformations. Now to get these equations of deformations we need to cut this assembly. Now it is a simple way to cut this assembly is that if we remove this bolt head or if we remove this washer then this sleeve and bolt will be free to expand or contract when it is subjected to the change in temperature. Now when we remove this bolt head and the washer at the same time we can see in the next diagram now here when it is subjected to the rise in temperature the sleeve and bolt will expand freely. So here in this diagram now here delta 1 will be the free expansion for sleeve and uh, delta 2 will be the free expansion for this bolt in this case. Now as we know that whole this assembly is fixed at it both ends so whatever is the expansion because of the rise in temperature will take place for this assembly will be same and this free expansion uh, sorry 
this expansion for this assembly will be delta in this case. So here in this case we can say that uh, this delta is the net or the net increase in length of this assembly. Now before that if we see the free expansion for sleeve and the bolt as per the formula we know that this delta 1 will be equal to alpha s into delta t into l and delta 2 will be equal to alpha b into delta t into l where alpha s is the coefficient of thermal expansion for sleeve and here alpha b will be the coefficient of thermal expansion for bolt. Now in this case it is given that alpha s is greater than this alpha b that is the coefficient of thermal expansion for sleeve is greater than that of the bolt. So therefore obviously free expansion for sleeve will be more that is delta 1 will be more than delta 2 that is the free expansion of the bolt in this case. So here in this diagram also you can see here delta 1 is greater than delta 2 in this case. Now in this case if you see this delta now that is the net increase in length for this whole assembly here we can say delta 1 is greater than this uh, delta at the same time this delta 2 is less than this delta. In this case now as both ends of this uh, assembly are fixed this free expansion will not take place. So in this case this fixed support will offer some resistance to this free expansion of this sleeve and bolt. So if you see in the next diagram now as this sleeve expands in this case by delta 1 the fixed support will offer some compressive force here in order to maintain the whole assembly or the length of this whole assembly as the same that is L. As we know that this is a composite assembly both sleeve and bolt will expand by the same amount that is delta in this case. So to man maintain this uh, final expansion or the net expansion of this assembly as delta in this case in order to get that this fixed support will offer a compressive force at the same time if you see now this bolt now here this fixed support will tend to elongate it or will apply some tensile force in this case. So once we understand that which material is in compression and which material is in tension then the rest of the example will be very simple to analyze. So in this case one thing we know that now that sleeve will be under in compression and this bolt will be under in tension. Now once again see all these three diagrams. Now the cusp if, uh, if we see now the sleeve is in uh, compression and at the same time the bolt will be in tension. So we can say that the shortening takes place in sleeve and in bolt the elongation takes place. So let us consider the shortening in sleeve is delta 3. So in this case in this diagram you can see here this is delta 3 that is the shortening of the member and here delta 4 that is the elongation of this member. So now we can find this delta 3 and delta 4 in this case here delta 3 will be equal to PSL upon ASES and delta 4 will be equal to PBL upon ABAB. Now here it is very simple to understand how it comes that is PL upon A. Now for any actually loaded members we know that uh, when it is subjected to actual force P the respective change in length of this is PL upon A. If you see this diagram whatever is this PS or PB these are the uh, compressive or tensile forces in sleeve and bolt offered by these supports and both these forces are uh, axial forces and hence because of these axial forces whatever is the shortening or whatever is the elongation takes place inside the assembly it is nothing but this delta 3 and delta 4 that is equal to PSL upon ASES and delta 4 is PBL upon ABAB. Here you can consider it as L as the same because it is a composite bar so length of sleeve and bolt will be same for both members. Now here once we are able to find delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 and delta 4 we will arrange whole all these four terms in terms of this uh, net expansion that is delta in this case. So here we can say that for a sleeve now uh, the net elongation of the sleeve will be nothing but equal to delta 1 minus this delta 3 means free expansion of the sleeve at the same time as it is not allowed to freely expand this uh, 
fixed support will offer some compressive force and uh, hence the shortening takes place in this sleeve that is the delta 3 so here net change in length we can say or net elongation for sleeve we can say it is delta 1 minus delta 3 and at the same time for bolt now uh, that is the second material here uh, the free expansion will take place that is delta 2 at the same time we need to again stretch it or the support tends to stretch this member that is uh, bolt so here the elongation for the bolt will be nothing but equal to delta 2 plus delta 4 in this case so delta 2 is the free expansion at the same time this bolt head tends to uh, extend it or elongate it so that is equal to delta 4 in this case so here elongation for bolt is delta 2 for delta 2 plus delta 4 so we can easily say here delta is nothing but that is the net change in length or increase in length for whole assembly will be equal to delta 1 minus delta 3 is equal to delta 2 plus delta 4 in this case now we can put all these uh, terms of delta 1 delta 3 delta 2 and delta 4 in this equation so here finally we get the equation of this delta that is alpha s into delta t into l minus p s l upon a s e s is equal to alpha b into delta t into l plus p b l upon a b e b now here in this case if you see here length of this whole assembly it is same for all these terms so you can same easily cancel it now now at the same time if you see now here in this third diagram by the conditions of equilibrium we can say that whatever is the compressive force in the sleeve will be equal to the tensile force in a bolt so therefore by equilibrium we can say that this ps is equal to pb in this case so we can put this conditions of equilibrium in the equation of this deformation and then finally you can easily find either compressive force in sleeve or tensile force in bolt and then you can easily find out the temperature stress in sleeve that is sigma s is equal to a s upon p s upon a s and sigma b is equal to p b upon a b so you can easily find here the thermal stresses in sleeve at the same time the thermal stresses in bolt in this case now if you see the sleeve it is in compression so the respective thermal stress in sleeve will be compressive stress and if you see this bolt now it is in under tension so the respective stress in the bolt will be a tensile stress and that is equal to pb upon ab so once we are able to see this equation or we are able to uh, derive this equation then to analyze or to solve this example will be a very simple task just to know that if you observe this equation we'll just quickly discuss how to formulate this equation without uh, doing such analysis it is very simple if you see the both hand side of this equation here on both hand side we have this term alpha into delta t into l so this is nothing but the free expansion for the material so on left hand side you write down the first material write down its free expansion that is alpha s into delta t into l on the right hand side you write down the free expansion for the second material here it is alpha b into delta t into l after that you try to understand which member is in compression and which member is in tension in this case this sleeve is in compression so you just minus or you just subtract the respective change in length uh, in the first equation here uh, on the left hand side so here you are just subtracting whatever is the compression or contraction takes place in the sleeve that is equal to PSL upon ASCS and at the same time on right hand side if you see the second member that is a bolt it is in tension so you need to add whatever elongation takes place in the bolt that is equal to PBL upon ABAB both this shortening of the member or elongation of the member are because of the actual forces developed because of the fixity of this member so after getting this equation just you need to consider the equilibrium condition for the uh, equation of the forces and then you can easily find out the thermal stresses and once you are able to find this ps uh, once you are able to find out the uh, this hand side of this equation then you can easily find the net increase in uh, length of this member or net decrease in length of this member and then you can solve this particular example